what is up guys, Akaz here with another very exciting Cinema 4D tutorial. I don't know if you all find it that exciting, but we'll crack on anyways. So what we're going to be looking on today's tutorial is how to create this really nice 3D text within Cinema 4D where we've got each letter rotating a different way. So let's head on into Cinema and get started. So if we just open up Cinema 4D now, I'm going to go to MoGraph, create a new MoGraph text object. Zoom in a little bit, get a better look at this. There we go. And if I just move this up a little bit. So you're going to change your text to, to whatever you feel. I'm just going to type acres as usual. And then we're going to change the font by clicking on the font button here. Now the font that I'm going to be using today and the font that I used in the example is a font called Bauhaus 96. Let me just find it, two seconds. There we go. Bauhaus 93 actually. <laughs> So that's B A U H A U S 93. So if you, I, I think you can get it from thefont.com, just type in Bauhaus 93, and I'm sure you'll be able to download it somewhere. It's a really nice font, actually. It's good for 3D work. As you can see, it's a nice, bulky, bulky font. And then what we're going to do is just increase the depth to around 100 looking good and we'll rename this text object acres and what we're going to do is just hit command C command V or control C control V if you're on Windows and that's just going to duplicate the text object so now we've got two different text objects and what we're going to do is on the duplicated text layer we're just going to decrease the depth to around around 80 and we're just going to line up the duplicated text layer just in the middle so you can see we've got so it's right in the middle and we've got these edges on the side and then what we're going to do after that is if we go on cap and if we change the start cap to fillet cap, and we'll do the same with the end cap, just change that to fillet cap. And then we're going to drop the radius down to about two or three, just so it's not too much. There we go, already we've got that really nice beveled edge around the text. Cool, so now what we're going to do is just add a few materials is just two purple materials that I made previously so I'm just going to drag that one onto the outside and this one on the inside one and we'll just see how that looks it's looking alright so what I'm going to do now is just add just the light we're going to move this move this light in front and up Cool, so there we go. See how that's looking now. Looking better, looking better. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap these materials around. See how that looks. Yep, that's looking a lot better now. So now what we want to do is, in the example, you can see we've got each letter sort of rotated to face a different way. So it's a little bit tedious to do this if you've got a long name or you've got a lot of type to work with, but we'll crack on anyways. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select both of the text layers and hit C on the keyboard, C for cat. And basically what that's going to do is just going to make them editable so we can move around each individual letter. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to open up this first group and you can see now we've got each individual letter can move it round 
just to show you. And what we're going to do is select these individual letters and then just drag them outside of the group. Actually, we're going to need to put the materials back on. So just hold control down and copy the materials onto the letters. And then we're just going to delete this group and we'll do the same for this for the duplicated text layer. Just open up the group, drag the individual letters outside of the group, and then you may need to, to reapply the textures. So hold control down and just copy the layers. There we go. So now what we've got is we've separated each individual letter. So we've got that C there, got that C there. And now what we want to do is arrange these individual letters so that they're in a group. So the A's with the other A, the C's with the other C, and so on and so forth. So to do that, all we're going to do is just arrange the texts. So we're just going to drag the first A next to the second A. The C next to the C, the R next to the R, and so on and so forth. So now we've got them all nicely arranged. And now what we want to do is we just want to put the two letters into a group, and we do that by hitting Alt and G on the keyboard. So if we hit Alt, G, with both of them selected, that'll make it a group. And then now if we select the group, we can move the text, both of the A's at the same time. <clears throat> and we just rename this group A. And we'll do the same. Alt G, make it into a group. Rename the group. Alt G. Rename the group. Alt G, rename the group. Like I said before, it can be a little bit tedious, but it gets the job done. So now we've arranged all these letters. Looking good, looking good. So now what you want to do is you just want to arrange the camera. just to how you want it to look so there's there's looking good so what we want to do to start rotating these texts now is if we select the A group and hit R on the keyboard or you can use this button up here the rotate tool and all we're going to do is just rotate each group now you want to make sure that you select the group itself from over here because if you just select it by clicking on it what you're going to do is you're only going to move one of the letters so make sure you select the group and just have a little play around have some fun with it so I'm just there's, it's completely random just have a play around see what works best for your text cool that's looking good so now we want to do now is just go back to our selection tool click on the eye and then we're just going to arrange these so that they're more closely together maybe move them forward a little bit move them across Move that one over. Maybe move it forward a little bit. And just have some fun, really. Just see what works best. I mean, if you're using a different font, you might want to rotate them differently. You might want to arrange the letters differently. I always encourage you to, to use your own colours, use your own fonts, and try and make the work your own. 
So now we've got all these nicely arranged. We'll see how this looks. Looking good. And there's a few things that I just want to go over in the render settings to make this a little bit nicer. So if we click on the render settings button, which is this one right here. If we click on that. First off, we want to go on to anti-aliasing and change the geometry from change the anti-aliasing from geometry to best. Minimum level one by one, maximum level four by four or two by two. But as we're only rendering a picture, I'll bump that up to four by four. So now if we render now, you can see that we've got some really nice reflections going on. Whereas before there was kind of jagged edges on the reflections. So now we haven't got that anymore, which is nice. And there's also one more thing that I want to add. If we click on effect here, we just want to add ambient inclusion. And that's all you want to do. And what ambient inclusion will do is, if we render now, it is a bit of a render hog, ambient inclusion, because it's a lot to do with shadows and reflections. So as we're only rendering just a still image, it's all right to use, but if you're using it within an animation, you might want to drop down the settings a little bit. So you can see now what ambient inclusion is doing is creating realistic shadows. And you'll notice that I haven't even got shadows selected on the light that we've got. I mean, there's no real need because it's only a still image and we don't really need the shadows too much ambient inclusion will do so now that that's rendering I just want to go over to the render settings and if I show you in the example here in Photoshop I've got this background on but all that's done that's just a gradient within Photoshop it's actually the text has no background itself. Now you may have seen the tutorial that I've done on how to do this to using the alpha channel. But I'm just going to go over that again just so everyone knows how to do it. So what you want to do within save, just choose a destination that you want to save it to. We'll save it to my desktop. Click save. And then what you want to do is change the format to PNG portable network graphics and once you've got the PNG format selected just select alpha channel and then when you render there'll be no background included and you'll be able to import it into Photoshop and then just make your own background you can do a circular image or a nice gradient looking good so once all this is finished and you got your render settings done ambient inclusions on anti-aliasing that looks pretty much I think we're pretty much done there and then all you have to do is hit the orange render button and it will start to render ready for you to import into Photoshop and do whatever you feel necessary with so yeah that pretty much wraps it up for today's tutorial thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos so thanks for watching see you later